Justin, I'm so tired of watching your videos. I, I, my wife and kids are making me watch them. This is terrible. I'm tired of watching them. And I can't believe I'm going to federal prison. 24 hours a day, I think about the fact that I'm going to Cumberland Federal Prison Camp and I'm going to prison. I didn't do anything wrong and what the first day is going to be like. And by the way, Justin, I want to let you know I'm tired of watching your videos and you talk too damn fast. Can you slow it down so someone like me can understand and comprehend it? Talk slower, but I need your help. Are you sure <laughs> you'd like my help? given that I talk too fast and you're tired of watching my videos. Justin, jokes aside, I need your help. Okay, in order to help you, can I ask you some questions? Why are you so angry? I'll tell you why I'm angry. I didn't do a damn thing wrong. The government, the judge, and my lawyer screwed me. I paid back all of the money and they're still gonna send me to federal prison away from my wife and kids and grandkids for a year and a day. This is utterly absurd. I didn't do a damn thing wrong. Will you help me? Yes, in order to help you, I have to speak directly. Can I do that? Yes. You might not think that it's your fault, but it is your problem. And it's essential you respond to it appropriately because your family's watching and everything you do, they're assessing and you're making them, they're, you're freaking them out more than you need to be. So I wanna offer you some advice on our call and I'm gonna offer that same advice in this, this video for transparency, this person ended up retaining our team. And before I continue, thank you for joining the White Collar Advice community. We're so grateful. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Give me the bad if I talk too fast and give me the good stuff too. It's the only way that I can learn. On our call, I advise this person. There are some things he needs to begin to doing for his inevitable surrender to prison. Like so many people traversing the system, he's put on about 40 pounds while fighting his case. The stress, the eating, uh, very little sleeping. He's put on a lot of weight. And like so many people who go to federal prison, he's gonna wanna get fitter and stronger. But some people like go in out of shape and they see that dusty dirt track and the weights and they try to become an Olympic athlete. And so many people, as I spit flies out of my mouth, so many people immediately get hurt because they go from no exercise to a ton of exercise. So I encouraged him to begin to walk with his wife and kids and get a little bit healthier. He's like, I like that advice. That's good advice. I said, did I say it slowly enough for you? He said, don't say that again. I said, okay, okay fine. Additionally, he has some health issues as so many people do. And I learned they're correctly noted in the probation report, but I still advised him to surrender to federal prison with, with ample medications, knowing the Bureau of Prisons is eventually gonna transfer him over to the BOP formulary. But I conditioned him and all of you to know that you may not get the medications you need, the BOP and federal prison, their health here is, how do I say it? It's lacking, so that's the reason you wanna be healthier for that first day and you wanna understand with your physician what medications may look like. We have people on our team who can help you understand that process as well. I'll put up a link, here's a pitch by the way, to schedule a call with our team. If you have questions about that first day or process or health issues on the inside, schedule a call, our team will help you. So you wanna get medications out of the way. You also wanna form a budget. I will put up in the YouTube description here a link on how to send money through Western Union that first day. I'll put up a link on how the core link systems work so your family can expect that email from you. That first day, there's a chance they call home. There's a chance that first day you, you get an email from your family, but oftentimes those emails via core links end up in spam. So I'll put up all of the helpful links that I can, including how to send mail to your family, to your loved ones that first day in federal prison. I asked him if he wanted his family to go with him to the prison. He's like, I don't know. You're the expert. I see you on Dr. Phil. I see you on Fox News. Why are you asking me that question? Shouldn't you tell me the answer to that question? <laughs> Hold on, he is awesome, he's fantastic. Hold on, okay, let me offer you my advice. Great, Justin, that's why I'm on the phone, to get some advice from you, you're the expert. I saw you on Dr. Phil, my wife and daughters watched the whole 90 minute video. I couldn't get past more than 10 minutes. I'm not a huge fan of Dr. Phil. I don't know if you're still friends with him, don't tell him. I'm not gonna talk, tell Dr. Phil, and I don't think he cares. That first day in federal prison, you should have your family go with you. If you're mentally correct, if you're in the right frame of mind, if you're gonna complain the whole way, lament over the unfairness that is your life and the government screwing you, take an Uber, take a taxi, go by yourself because they're going to be tired of hearing it. But if you're strong, if you've surrendered to federal prison with your release plan, which our team, of course, is going to help this person create, that documents what you're going to do that first day and throughout your whole prison journey to try to get an earlier release, send that plan to your probation officer who can give you more liberty on home confinement, and also while you're in the halfway house, who can then, you can also send that release plan to your judge who just gave you 15 months, who's not a huge fan of yours, or a year and a day, not a huge fan of yours. If you're willing to do that work, I told him, then your family's gonna see that you're strong. Your family's going to see that you're leading. And if you're willing to do that with the right attitude, of course have them surrender with you. They'll drive into the federal prison, you'll park and they will walk you in. You're gonna go inside, they're gonna go in the different direction. He's like, okay, I think I'm open to those ideas. Also to that first day in federal prison, drive slowly. Saliva's continuing to roll out.
drive slowly around that prison. These prison towns are broken. They're looking for resources. If you're going three miles an hour over the speed limit, they're going to give you an expensive ticket. Plus that ticket can take an hour or 45 minutes and you don't want to then surrender late. That can get you going, well, not in the right direction. To that end, if your letter from the BOP says get there at noon, get there at 10 o'clock in the morning, get there early, because the earlier you get in, guess what? The earlier you get processed over to the minimum security camp. The goal, I think, is to try to get there for your first standing count, usually at 4 p.m. Attention all campers, return back to the compound for standing count. Attention all campers, get back. Get used to that noise, I told them, because all of you will hear it repeatedly many times a day for the standing count. After you surrender, I told them with medications, your family will send you money. They're gonna understand you're gonna email and call maybe that day, but it could be within the coming days. Understand there's gonna be an orientation process. He's like, here we go. I read lessons from prison. I read it. I understand there is that you look like a sumo wrestler. You wrote that you look like a total fool. I don't know about fool, I told him, but yes, you're going to get naked. You're going to go through a strip search. You're going to squat and cough, I told him. I did it in a way where I squatted in the correctional officer who was spitting chewing tobacco into the 7-Eleven cup. It's like, you are, not a, you are not a sumo wrestler. But yes, prepare for that discomfort. It's part of the journey, but it's just one day in your life you'll get through it. Then what he said, okay, you may sit in a holding cell for a while, alone with your thoughts, but that's an ample, that's a great opportunity to continue fitness routine that you just told me you wanna begin now and continue while in prison. He's like, what does that mean? You just do push-ups in a holding cell? I'm like, yes, you did read lesson from prison and you asked that question in a way where you already know the answer because that's what I did while I was sitting in that cell for a few hours. My lazy ass began to do some push-ups that helped carry me through my entire prison term. Then eventually they're gonna come to you and they're gonna ask you some, what type of questions are they gonna ask me? They're gonna ask you a number of questions. Are you willing to cooperate? The answer is no. Any health conditions we need to know about, you articulate that to them. They may also ask you if you can give them the name and phone number of someone in case something happens to you. What's gonna to happen to me? What are you talking about? I thought I'm going to a minimum security camp. It's not a club fed, you said. I watched that video where you said it's not a club fed, but it's not like the higher security penitentiaries your partner Santos served time in. Why are they asking for the name and phone number of a family member? Something that happened to me in there? Well, of course, if you act like a total fool in federal prison, you're going to get beat up, things happen. If you act like a total fool in a Dunkin' Donuts, you're gonna get beat up, bad things are going to happen, but our team will teach you to understand your environment, to study, to listen and watch much more than you ever talk. Let friendships form organically from that first day, and if you're willing to do that, you're gonna have a really productive, healthy, wonderful experience that's gonna inspire your family. Justin, don't give me that. I just wanna get through this experience, move on and never talk about it again. Ah, by the time you're done working with our team, you're not just gonna talk about it. You're gonna share lessons learned by way of your release plan and share it with your family and improve this beautiful legacy you've created. This will turn out to be a little blip in your life. Justin, I just cannot believe the fact that I'm going to prison. This is awful. This first day is going to be traumatic. Keep telling me more about it. Well, eventually you're gonna hit the compound that afternoon. And when you hit the compound, it's going to be very self-paced and self-directed. In fact, when I got to federal prison that first afternoon, I recall telling some friends, I was stunned at how happy, <laughs> at how happy some dudes were. Like, what are they smiling about? What are they, they're in prison. What are they smiling about after walking the track, exercising, playing cards, like working? Like, what are, they, what are they so happy about there in federal prison? So you're going to see people that are happy and smiling, a lot of guys who are just kind of quiet, doing their own thing. Some will come up and engage you. Others will care less that you were there, but you're gonna see some prisoners very kind. And if they walk you to the chapel to get some, a toothbrush and some toothpaste, some shaving cream, it's totally fine, it's welcome. Many new prisoners will receive these things. And on the way out, you may be asked to donate to this so when new prisoners come in, they'll receive it. But it's totally okay to accept that. Um, it's something that all new prisoners receive. Okay, what else do I need to know? Well, you're eventually going to go to the chow hall, and a lot of the things you teach your kids and your kids now teach their children, your grandchildren, apply. Don't cut in line to go to the chow hall. Don't speak too loudly on the phone. After you use the restroom, wash your hands. Well, of course I'm going to wash my hands after I use the restroom. Let's be honest. The last time you urinated, did you wash your hands? Okay, fine, fair, fair point. Understand you're moving into a new environment. People are watching even if they don't speak to you. Never cut in line, always wash your hands. Don't speak too loudly on the phone. And more, most importantly, create a routine you can defend, defend to your family. When you call home, they're gonna ask, what are you doing all day? You may call home that first day and they're gonna say, what have you been doing? If it's complaining and bitching, they're not gonna be inspired. They're gonna be more worried about you than you already are, which is how I'm gonna wrap up this video in a few minutes. The first day will go by quickly. It's a whirlwind. It's very emotional because it's that first day in federal prison. But as I explained to this person, as I explained to all of you, it's just one day in your life. 
And the way to succeed through that first day in federal prison is to the extent that you can get totally detached from the experience. What I mean by that is think about in the totality of your life, how big a deal really is this first day in federal prison after all you've endured at this stage of the journey, indictment, guilty plea, PSR, sentencing, surrendering the DOJ press releases. You've endured so much to put so much emphasis on that first day in federal prison is a total mistake. Do not do it. It's just one day in your life. Detach yourself. Think one month, one year, 10 years, 20, 30 years from now, will it really be that big of a deal? He's like, well, I guess if you approach it from that perspective, it's not that big a deal. I said, that's correct. If you can detach yourself and recognize what it really is one day in your life, a little blip in the totality of your life, it will then enable you to focus on what's most important. And that's your family. Getting through this with dignity, dignity and a plan. No longer complaining. You chose to plead guilty. Yeah, 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 but I wasn't going to win at trial. I understand you were most likely weren't going to win at trial, but you chose to plead guilty. And you chose to hire that lawyer. And you chose to pay back the restitution thinking it would keep you out of prison, but the judge wanted to make an example out of you because that judge felt you should not be able to buy your way out of prison. You will only get back on track and get back to the person that you were for so long, a role model and really an idol for your friends, family, kids, and grandkids. You're never going to get there until you begin to say, I made bad decisions. In retrospect, I would do some things differently, which is why I mentioned earlier in our call. You might not think it's your fault, but it's your problem. And one of your problems is not taking responsibility for anything you've done that have gotten you here. Am I speaking too fast? He said, no, Justin, you're saying it just right. If you're going to federal prison, I know it's tough. I know many of you shouldn't be in this wretched, sickening, awful system. I know many of you, it should be handled civilly at worst. I know, I understand it, I get it. Super easy for me to go to prison because I did it. I was 33 without children. I had the easiest journey you could ever possibly have in part because I met Michael Santos who mentored me every single day of the way. I had it easier and it was hard. So I know for many of you, it is brutal and life changing, but do not pay, do not give it more than it's worth. That first day is just one day. Detach yourself from the situation and you put yourself on a path that have a beautiful, wonderful, productive journey that will make those that love and support you proud of you. And I'm proud to have this channel and opportunity to influence and help all of you traversing this really wretched system. But if you're going to go through it, you might as well get through it with dignity and a plan. And our team is so grateful to help you do that.